Thanks, Chase. Well, scientists have discovered something unusual on the seafloor miles off the Oregon coast to help them under better understand earthquake zones. This is especially important for coastal communities that could get flooding from an earthquake within half an hour after the quake starts. Something is stirring beneath the Pacific Northwest. It begins as a whisper, a vibration too soft to feel, a shift in heat too faint to notice. But scientists are now paying attention, and what they're seeing has stunned even the most seasoned experts. Oregon, long regarded for its lush forests, dormant volcanoes, and silent lakes, is revealing secrets buried for thousands, perhaps millions, of years. This isn't just about Oregon, it's about what lies beneath our feet, and the chilling possibility that Earth is about to change. The unexpected signal. It all started with a subtle anomaly, a faint seismic blip that barely registered on regional monitoring stations. Just another harmless tremor, or so it seemed. But deep within the data center at the University of Oregon, a young seismologist decided to take a closer look. The waveform didn't match any known tectonic activity. It was unusually rhythmic, almost pulsing, with an undertone of low-frequency energy that seemed to resonate rather than shake. Intrigued, the team ran the signal through multiple filters. What emerged was a pattern unlike anything they'd ever seen, slow, sustained vibrations paired with deep geothermal pulses rising from a depth far greater than typical fault movement. This wasn't a plate shifting or a fault line slipping. It was something more organic. Within 24 hours, a mobile research unit was deployed to the epicenter, a remote volcanic corridor just south of Bend, Oregon. The area, dotted with extinct cinder cones and ancient lava tubes, had long been considered geologically quiet, but now it was humming. Equipped with drones, thermal imaging cameras, deep earth scanners, and ground penetrating radar, the team began a detailed survey of the terrain. Initial scans revealed something startling, a subsurface cavity nearly 200 feet wide, emitting waves of geothermal heat and acoustic echoes. The surrounding ground, once solid basalt, was vibrating ever so slightly, as if breathing. Stranger still, no natural explanation fit. No magma chamber, no water reservoir, no known volcanic vent. The cavity was perfectly spherical, its edges too smooth to be natural. The temperature inside was rising. Something beneath the Earth's crust had either awakened or was in the process of arriving. What they discovered next would not only challenge everything they thought they knew about the region, but would also raise a terrifying question. What if the Earth itself is trying to tell us something? Heat from below. Beneath a quiet forest floor, they found heat signatures emanating from more than a mile below the Earth's crust. That's not unusual in volcanic regions, but what made it extraordinary was where the heat was coming from. There was no known magma chamber nearby, no geothermal hotspot recorded, but somehow temperatures beneath the forest had risen over 40 degrees Fahrenheit in less than a month. Trees were dying, soil microbes were mutating, small mammals native to the area, moles, voles, and even deer were found dead within a two mile radius. It was like something ancient had turned on reawakening under the Earth's skin. The anomaly was first detected in early spring 2025 by a team conducting a routine ground-penetrating radar survey for potential geothermal energy sites in eastern Oregon. Thermal imaging initially suggested a malfunction as localized temperatures spiked sharply in an otherwise geologically dormant region. But follow-up measurements confirmed it. Something underground was heating rapidly and in a pattern that defied traditional explanations. Field teams arrived within days 
and were met with an eerie landscape. Patches of forest floor were steaming. Tree roots, once deep and stable, were now brittle and rotting. Insects had vanished almost entirely. The soil, when sampled, was found to contain mutated strains of microbial life not previously cataloged, some appearing to metabolize sulfur and carbon at accelerated rates. Further seismic readings revealed deep rhythmic tremors, too small to be felt, but consistent and oddly mechanical, almost like a pulse. The region had no history of recent volcanic activity and no tectonic shifts had been recorded. Some geologists speculated it could be a new magma intrusion, slowly pushing its way up through the mantle while others entertained more exotic theories, the collapse of a long-buried geothermal dome, or perhaps the reactivation of a prehistoric volcanic vent sealed off since the Ice Age. Whatever it is, it's active, it's growing, and it's unlike anything Oregon has seen before. The Hidden Fault Line. Using satellite imaging, deep seismic scans, and ground-penetrating radar, a research team in Southern Oregon made a discovery that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Beneath the ancient lava plains and rolling hills near the Klamath Basin, they uncovered what appeared to be a massive, undocumented fault line, one that had never been recorded in any geological database. It wasn't just the size that startled them, it was the motion. Though invisible from the surface, the fault was alive. It was moving, slowly, quietly, but undeniably, like a leviathan shifting in its sleep. At first, the anomaly was thought to be a local fracture, an isolated crack caused by tectonic stress. But when researchers overlaid the movement data with regional earthquake patterns, they noticed something far more ominous. The fault's behavior mirrored that of the Cascadia subduction zone, the infamous offshore boundary capable of producing earthquakes over magnitude 9.0. Could this hidden fault be a spur of the larger Cascadia system? Or worse, a pressure valve silently accumulating stress that could release in tandem with a Cascadia rupture? Geologists began to panic, not publicly, but behind closed doors. This discovery meant the region might not just be vulnerable to the big one from the coast, but also to a double rupture event where two faults trigger back-to-back -back quakes or a single amplified disaster. Seismic models were updated, emergency briefings were held, and quietly, monitoring stations were installed near the site. But one question remains unanswered. Why now? Why has this fault remained hidden for so long? And why is it showing signs of life just as global seismic activity appears to be on the rise? Whether this fault is a sleeping giant or something far worse, scientists know one thing for certain. Oregon's deep underground secrets are only just beginning to surface. The microbes that shouldn't exist. While geologists scrambled to make sense of the strange seismic cavity beneath Oregon's volcanic corridor, a microbiology team working quietly nearby made a discovery no one was prepared for. Their mission had been routine. Analyze soil samples from the scorched heat-affected zones surrounding the geothermal anomaly, but what they found buried in the superheated earth would shatter the boundaries of biology itself. Within the first few samples, researchers identified colonies of microorganisms not only surviving, but thriving in temperatures well above the boiling point of water. These extremophiles fed on sulfur compounds and rare trace minerals, conditions that should be hostile to most life. Yet under the microscope, these microbes were not just active, they were replicating rapidly, forming dense biofilms in the hostile soil, like they'd been there forever. The real shock came during genetic sequencing. These microbes had no match in any global genomic database, not even close, but certain DNA fragments bore eerie resemblance to ancient thermophilic species, organisms believed to have gone extinct tens of millions of years ago during Earth's last major climate upheavals. These were relics from a prehistoric world, somehow preserved or evolved in total isolation. Theories emerged fast. Had these life forms been trapped in deep geological pockets for millennia, shielded by volcanic rock and time? Or had they evolved in secret 
Undisturbed and unknown, beneath our very feet, NASA didn't wait. Within 48 hours, officials arrived with their own sampling gear. To them, this wasn't just about Earth. If microbial life could survive in such extreme conditions here, sealed beneath layers of rock, without sunlight, in boiling mineral broth, it meant similar life could exist on Mars, under the ice of Europa, or deep within Enceladus. This wasn't just a scientific anomaly anymore. It was a biological message from beneath the Earth. You've only scratched the surface. The Crater Lake Connection Crater Lake, one of Oregon's most iconic landmarks, sits atop a collapsed volcano known as Mount Mazama. Formed nearly 7,700 years ago in one of the most explosive eruptions North America has ever seen, it's a place of mystery, legend, and immense geological significance. But now, there's a new reason to look closer. Just weeks after the seismic anomalies were recorded in the surrounding region, strange readings began emerging from the lake itself. Subsurface temperature sensors, part of a long-running monitoring program, detected subtle but persistent fluctuations at depths greater than 1,000 feet. These changes, while minor in isolation, came alongside a series of faint, rhythmic tremors felt along the caldera rim. Tremors that didn't conform to known volcanic pattern or tectonic movement. Concerned by the irregularities, researchers deployed a fleet of autonomous underwater drones equipped with sonar and chemical sensors to scan the lake bed, an area largely inaccessible due to Crater Lake's extreme depth and clarity. What they found shocked them. Several narrow fissures had opened near the center of the basin, releasing steady streams of warm gas and mineral-laden fluid. Samples collected revealed elevated levels of sulfur and iron, but more importantly, rare isotopes commonly associated with deep earth material, specifically ones typically found in mantle-derived plumes. This suggested that the activity wasn't merely volcanic, it might originate from a deeper geodynamic source beneath the crust. If confirmed, this could mean the reactivation of a long dormant magma system, or even the presence of a mantle plume, a rising column of superheated rock from deep within the Earth. Either scenario could reshape the geological risk profile for the entire Pacific Northwest. Scientists are now racing to install additional sensors and analyze fluid composition in real time. Though there's no immediate threat of eruption, Crater Lake's hidden movements hint at changes long in the making. Something is awakening beneath Mount Mazama, and it's beginning to show. The indigenous legends resurface. Long before seismologists arrived with sensors and volcanologists traced tectonic fault lines, the Klamath tribes of Southern Oregon already knew that Mount Mazama, the now collapsed volcano that forms Crater Lake, was more than just a mountain. It was sacred, alive, and dangerous. According to ancient Klamath oral tradition, Mount Mazama was once the domain of Lao, the god of the underworld, who waged a fiery battle with Skell, the god of the sky. Their war shook the land and split the heaven. In the end, Lao was cast down into the earth, his fury so great that he tore apart the mountain itself, causing it to collapse and fill with water, creating what we now call Crater Lake. For generations, elders have passed down this legend not just as myth, but as warning. Now, in the face of mounting seismic activity and strange findings from deep beneath the lake bed, like underwater volcanic domes and shifting thermal vents, some Klamath elders are speaking out again. They say the signs are returning. The spirits beneath the earth are restless. It sounds poetic until you look at the science. Could these developments be more than coincidence? Could the ancient stories contain real geological memory, encoded not in data, but in narrative? As scientists re-examine these legends through a modern lens, a provocative possibility emerges that indigenous knowledge, rooted in generations of environmental observation, holds clues science is only just beginning to grasp. Maybe the gods of fire and sky were never just metaphor. Maybe they were witnesses to the land's greatest transformations and maybe they're still watching. The Rogue Valley Phenomenon. 
Just when scientists believed they were closing in on the source of the geothermal and seismic anomalies in central Oregon, something new and deeply unsettling began unfolding hundreds of miles to the south in Rogue Valley, a region known more for its vineyards and quiet farmland than for geological chaos was now becoming the epicenter of a new mystery. GPS units and tractors would suddenly lose signal or veer off course, despite clear skies and no technical faults. Then came the footage. A field camera, originally set up to monitor deer, captured something astonishing. The soil, in the middle of an empty field, began to ripple, visibly pulsing in slow waves. No earthquake had been recorded, no wind, no explanation. The U.S. Geological Survey dispatched a team immediately. Using portable radon detectors and magnetometers, they uncovered elevated radon gas emissions, often a precursor to tectonic shifts or subterranean disruptions. In some hotspots, the Earth's magnetic field fluctuated wildly as if something beneath the crust was generating an unnatural signature. Thermal imaging confirmed that the heat wasn't residual from surface activity. It was radiating upward from deep underground, and it wasn't uniform. It appeared in isolated patches, as if something were moving beneath the surface, disturbing the Earth in its path. What disturbed researchers most was the trajectory. The disturbances weren't random. They were following a rough northward path, connecting Rogue Valley to the volcanic anomalies near Crater Lake and the seismic cavity near Bend. This wasn't an isolated event anymore. It was a chain reaction, and it was spreading. What this means for the world. If all these phenomena were isolated, maybe we could explain them away as natural quirks, anomalies to be filed, studied, and forgotten. But together, they paint a far more ominous picture. A massive tectonic reorganization may be underway. Something stirring deep beneath Oregon's surface, building energy, pressure, and momentum. The ripple effects, already measurable across the Pacific Northwest, could signal the start of something far greater. Seismologists are beginning to see a pattern, small tremors clustering in places with no known seismic history. Volcanologists have noted a rising number of low-frequency earthquakes, often precursors to magma movement. Biologists are documenting accelerated mutations in subterranean life, and indigenous knowledge keepers are pointing to oral histories that describe similar patterns, stories of the land, breathing, of fire and floods that reshape the world. The big question remains, is this a precursor to a larger event? Could Oregon be entering the opening chapter of a new volcanic era, one that may awaken long dormant calderas across the Cascade Range? More terrifyingly, are we witnessing the early signs of a megathrust earthquake, a rupture along the Cascadia subduction zone capable of unleashing destruction on a continental scale? And most haunting of all, why now? Some suggest climate change is altering pressure balances in the Earth's crust. Others wonder if these are simply overdue geological processes catching up after centuries of quiet. But perhaps, as some tribal elders warn, the land has memory, and when ignored or wounded, it speaks back. Whatever the cause, Oregon is no longer just a region of interest. It may be the epicenter of a transformation that could shape not only the landscape of the Pacific Northwest, but the future of Earth itself.